Welcome everyone to this lecture by Learn Civil Engineering on the key physical properties of fluids. In this lecture, we will be distinguishing the features of fluids and defining important properties which will be used later on in the series for solving complicated problems. From everyday experiences, we are all familiar with how matter can exist in three different states, solid, liquid or gas. A typical example of this is H2O with its three states of ice, water, and steam. Substances that are either liquid or gaseous states are regarded as being fluids. Molecules of a substance in a solid state are closely packed together, bound by strong cohesive forces holding the molecules in a stable equilibrium in a virtually permanent arrangement. As a result of this, solids have both definite volume and definite shape. Molecules of a substance in a liquid state are also closely packed. However, the molecules are in continual relative motion to each other, so the arrangement of the molecules is constantly changing. Intermolecular cohesion means that a liquid has a definite volume, but it has no definite shape. Molecules of a gaseous state are, relatively speaking, widely spaced apart, typically 10 times greater than in a liquid. As a result, there is virtually no intermolecular cohesion in gases and so the molecules move freely along linear trajectories until they collide with one another or a containing boundary. Therefore, gases have neither a definitive volume nor a definitive shape. We can demonstrate these abilities for matter in each state to vary or keep a constant volume and shape by exploring what would happen if we placed matter of each state into a container. Due to its definitive volume and shape, if you were to place a solid into a container, the solid would not change at all. If you placed a liquid into a container, however, due to its non-definitive shape and due to gravity, the liquid will flow to fill as much of the container as possible, forming a free surface without changing its volume. Finally, if you were to place a gas in a container, the gas would expand to fill the container totally, varying its volume and shape. A change of state of a substance is caused by a change in temperature and or pressure. We are familiar with how cooling water to its freezing point results in a change from liquid to a solid, and likewise heating water to its boiling point results in a change from liquid to gas. However, it is also possible to boil water without heating it, but by significantly reducing the pressure of the surrounding environment. All materials, to some extent, exhibit deformation under an applied force, but there is a key distinction between how solids and fluids deform. Applying a shear force to the top surface of a solid results in a deformation to a fixed extent. The solid deforms until a point of equilibrium is reached, where it can offer permanent resistance to the applied force. On the other hand, if a shear force is applied to the top surface of a fluid, the deformation of the fluid will continually increase without limit for as long as the force is applied. That is, the fluid flows under the action of the applied shear force. That's not to say that the fluid does not offer resistance, it still does, except it is not enough resistance to allow a state of stationary equilibrium to be reached. Fluids are, however, able to offer permanent resistance to normal forces. For example, considering a simple fluid-filled piston, where the piston head is applying a normal force to the surface of the fluid, the fluid may compress a tiny amount, but that is of a fixed extent, i.e. the fluid reaches a state of deformation where it is able to offer permanent resistance to the applied normal force, and no further compression occurs. Therefore, to conclude this section on deformation, we know that when a fluid is subject to a shear force, it must flow. And, in a fluid at rest, only normal forces can be acting. In this next section, we will be defining the key physical properties of fluids. It is important to have a thorough understanding of these definitions, as they will be used throughout the rest of the hydraulic series as we start to model fluid behaviour. The distribution of matter within a fluid is best defined as density which is the mass per unit volume of the fluid. We denote density by rho, and if a mass m of fluid occupies a volume v, 
its density rho is defined as rho equals m over v. And density has dimensions of m l to the power of minus 3 and SI units of kilograms per meter cubed. Here is the table showing typical values of density for some common substances for solids, liquids and gases. The data shows that gases are considerably less dense than liquids and solids, which are of comparable density. This is because gas molecules are spaced more widely compared to solid and liquid molecules. It is also common to use the specific weight, defined as the weight per unit volume of the fluid. We denote specific weight by gamma. If a mass m of fluid occupies a volume v, its specific weight is defined as gamma equals mgv, which is also the same as saying rho g. Specific weight has dimensions of m l to the minus 2 t to the minus 2 and SI units kilograms per meter squared per second squared or newtons per meter cubed. Pressure donated with a lowercase p is defined as the force per unit area and is therefore a stress. If a normal force F is being applied to an area A, the pressure is defined as P equals F over A. Pressure has dimensions of M L to the power of minus 1, T to the power of minus 2 and SI units kilograms per meter per second squared or newtons per meter squared or also pascals. Bulk modulus, denoted by an uppercase k, is defined as the degree of compressibility of a fluid. There will be a future lecture looking at the bulk modulus of a fluid in more detail, with examples, but for now, the bulk modulus for a fluid is defined as k equals rho over change in rho times by change in p where rho is the density of the fluid and p is the pressure of the fluid. Bulk modulus has dimensions m l to the power of minus 1 t to the power of minus 2 and SI units of kilograms per meter per second squared or newtons per meter squared or pascals. The viscosity of a fluid is a measure of the resistance offered by the fluid to a shear deformation. Again, a lecture will be coming out in the near future going into more detail on the dynamic and kinematic viscosity of a fluid and how their equations are derived, but for now, the dynamic viscosity, denoted mu, is defined as mu equals 1 over tau times by du over dz, where tau is the applied shear stress and du over dz is the rate of shear strain. Dynamic viscosity has dimensions of m l to the minus 1 t to the minus 1 and SI units of kilograms per meter per second or pascal seconds. Kinematic viscosity, denoted mu, is defined as mu equals mu over rho, where mu is the dynamic viscosity and rho is the density of the fluid. Kinematic viscosity has dimensions of L squared t to the minus 1 and SI units of meters squared per second. To recap, in this lecture we have learnt how to distinguish the different states of matter, the different modes of deformation of a fluid, and we have defined the key physical properties of fluids, including fluid density, specific weight, pressure, bulk modulus and viscosity. As I mentioned earlier in the lecture, a video will be coming out next for each of the bulk modulus and the viscosity of fluid, going into more detail on both. This has been a lecture by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this lecture useful at all, please show support by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video. If you do have any remaining questions or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.